What's going on guys? So apparently I was not paying as much attention as I thought I was during the press release and all of that for this vehicle because I just discovered a feature that I didn't realize was on here. So obviously I'm in low range right now and I'm out here on a gravel road headed to my house. I thought this would be a good place to try this out. But apparently if you put the truck in low range and then put the transmission in manual mode, then you can use the auto stick to do what they call select speed control, which basically will modulate the speed of the vehicle using the throttle and the brake for you. So you don't have to touch any pedals. All you have to do is steer and the truck will maintain a set speed. I think uh, the lowest one is 0.6 miles per hour and then the next highest one is 1.2 miles per hour. But you can use this to uh, pretty much cruise around off-road without having to worry about the brake and the throttle. So that's kind of interesting. They thought of a lot of little things with this truck. All right, so we're gonna try this out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press the button here and it says use the auto stick shifter to adjust speed. So right now you can see it's set to 0.6 miles per hour. If I push down on it, it'll go to 1.2. So we're gonna go down a hill here and then we're gonna walk up the other hill without touching the brake or the throttle. And we'll see if this works. Looks like it's working pretty well right now going down the hill here. You can see we're at a slope of about five degrees and it's holding the speed perfectly. Interesting. So I used the shifter to move it on up to 2.5 miles per hour. And now we're gonna head up this hill in front of us, which I think is about 10 degrees, but I could be a little a little bit off there. Let's see what we got here on the in kilometer. So we're at five, six. Yeah, I think we're gonna end up at about 10. And look at that, it's holding speed. So that's pretty cool. I'm not touching the pedals at all. Now that's pretty neat. So a lot of you guys probably already knew about this, but I just found out about it. And that's kind of cool had no idea it was there but the next time we hit the trails we'll definitely use this pretty cool feature so they call it select speed control and again you just press the button over there and use your auto stick and it'll tell you up here in the display how fast you're currently set to go that's all there is to it guys pretty neat so that select speed control was pretty cool looks like we got a friend hanging out with us hey buddy <laughs> so my next project, guys, well, it's not going to be my next project. My next project is going to be to mount some cube lights on here. I ordered some brackets last night, and I'm in the process of trying to order some rigid cube lights. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Seems like they're on back order at the moment. I guess everybody's scarfing them up because of the 4th of July sales. But uh, one of the things I'm thinking about is a trailer brake controller because the factory one is late availability according to the uh, order guide and so i noticed that there's some really cool aftermarket ones that are probably end up being cheaper that you can mount anywhere you want and i was kind of thinking about this spot right here i saw one made by a company called Redark. Uh, i could be pronouncing that wrong uh, but i think it's Redark. Anyhow, it's got a little knob. It looks very similar to the factory setup and you can mount the knob remotely anywhere you want. And like I said, I'm thinking this might be a good spot. And then you just run your wiring to the, um, the brains of the operation up under your dash. So you can wire everything up under there and then just run it over to the remote. You could put it anywhere. I've seen some guys put it here where the 12 volt uh, DC outlet is. Uh, I thought maybe I could put it up here somewhere. Uh, but right here would be a good spot if it would fit in there because it's easy to get to, easy to see, and it's really kind of out of the way of everything else. And I believe it would be easy to install because this panel right here just pops off. You can pop that out and then use a trim tool and pop this off so I can mount it right there pretty easily. So I'm thinking about that. I'm still doing some research on them, trying to make sure, you know, I know exactly what kind of brake controller I want to go with because they all sort of have their pluses and minuses 
you know, traditionally we all had those boxes that we mounted up under the dash and it was just all one self-contained unit. There's some pros and cons to that. You've got the new style with the remote heads that you can mount anywhere, which are kind of neat. And I've even seen some that are a contained unit that you plug into the wiring back here. So you would just, uh, like here's your receptacle, you would plug it into there and then plug your trailer wire into the unit and all of your brake control functions work through there and it sends a Bluetooth signal to your smartphone. So it's all completely wireless and you don't have to do anything. So that's another pretty neat option. So I'm just kind of considering, you know, what's out there, what I would like to go with and pretty soon I'll probably be working on that because if you end up towing pretty heavy, you really need trailer brakes. Not only do you want to remain legal, but it's just a safe thing to do guys because you don't want to rear end somebody pulling a big load without trailer brakes and then have the insurance company take everything you own. You know, <laughs> that wouldn't be cool. And I know I've hashed this out before, but a lot of people are asking me about this wheel and tire setup on here. So just one more time, I'm gonna go over this. These are the American Outlaw Lone Star wheels. And these particular ones are 17 by eight and a half inch. And the offset is positive 10. The tires are obviously Milestar Patagonia MT in a 315-70-17. So it's basically a 35-12-50 equivalent. And I've had these for about 6,000 miles. You know, obviously I ran these on the JLU before I turned it in. And I love them so much that I decided to keep them and reuse them on this truck. These tires are fantastic. They're wearing really, really well. They're uh, somewhat quiet compared to most mud tires. Um, if you look at the tread here, Again, these things, there's not any like chopping, get this to focus, no chopping, no feathering. I mean, they're just wearing really well. I've got them at about 30 PSI and uh, they're doing just a really great job. I'm surprised at how good the traction is in the rain and the foul weather. I've run them in the snow and uh, they've just done a really great job out on the road. Um, so they're, they're also really smooth from zero all the way up to 70 on the interstate. They roll super smooth, no vibration at all. So these seem to be really good tires. You know, a long time ago, we would never dare run anything that wasn't a name brand tire, but it seems like that's kind of changing these days. There's a lot of off brand tires that are making some really good products. So don't be afraid to try out those Milestars if you can find a set. Seems like they got really popular really fast and now it's hard to even find a set of these things. It's one of the cool things about living out here in the country. You see all kinds of things like this. So that's basically just an update on the truck. Uh, I've got some cube lights on order that I'm going to mount up here because I live out in a rural area. And here in a few months, it'll be getting really dark in the mornings when I head to work. So I'm going to put some cube lights up here, try to light the road up a little better. I've got some step rails on order because I got to get something on there. Not only is my wife kind of short and our son's uh, 12 years old, so they need something to help them get up in the truck. Um, but it's just kind of annoying having rocks and mud and everything thrown down the side of the truck too. So I ordered some of those from a guy and supposedly they're on their way to me, although I haven't gotten any tracking info from him yet. So I need to check on that. And, uh, let's see, what else was there? I think that's pretty much it for the time being. Sorry about that. I got a phone call. It's kind of funny because the people that I ordered the rigid cube lights from called me and said, uh, you know, basically they're on back order four to six weeks maybe. And so I canceled the order and I'm going to go through and try to find maybe something else tonight. So whenever those brackets show up, I'll go ahead and mount those. And then I got to find some different lights that are hopefully in stock. If not, I'll just wait for the rigid ones because I want some good ones. So I don't want to get, you know, the cheap ones. I want something that's pretty good quality. You can see where one of the rocks hit my fender. These fenders are getting beat up pretty good with rocks. These are the rear ones. That's another reason why I got to get some step rails or something on here for some protection. But anyhow, guys, anyway, I got some stuff working for the truck and it's just going to be a little while before all this stuff gets delivered. So uh, as I have time, I'll work on it and we'll make some cool videos. I also got a guy who custom made me some graphics for the hood. You know, I don't know if you guys realize it, but I'm a meteorologist by education and I do a little meteorology work. And so I was like, hey, can you uh, design me something that uh, kind of has a weather theme to it for the truck? And he came up with some decals that's going to, um, well, I'll save that for later and show you, but it's going to be really, really cool. So anyway, that's the update, and I'm going to get in here and get some dinner made, so we'll talk to you guys later on. Thanks.